Now I got some Android tablets here. We got the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 FE. We have the new XP Pen Magic Drawing Pad. We have the Huion Canvas Slate 10. Which one is best for artists? Let's find out. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. And at the end of last year, I did like an Android tablet roundup for illustrators. I had no idea that it would be out of date and obsolete so quickly. Just in the last few weeks, XP Pen has released a brand new Android tablet with their own drawing tech baked in. Huion has released an Android tablet as well with a pen that you can draw on. And I have always recommended to people, if you're getting an art and illustration and want to use an Android tablet, that really Samsung is the place to go. I think their pens have been really good. Their tablets have been really good. But with these two new contenders specifically designed for artists, this is become a much more interesting field to look at. There are pros and there are cons to each of them, and so that's what we're gonna be doing today in this video. We're just gonna be running through those. So let's get started. Let's take a look at that Huion, the Canvas Slate 10. Now, if you saw my review, you, you might already know what I'm gonna say here. This is the one out of these three that I would not recommend. The Canvas Slate 10 comes in at $250. That is a fantastic price, especially for an Android tablet that's like a fully featured drawing tablet. But the problem here is the stylus. The stylus that it ships with is a USI stylus. That stands for Universal Stylus Initiative. These styluses are really common with Chromebooks and other Android tablets, and occasionally you'll see them working on Windows tablets as well. And the idea here is that you could take one stylus that it could work across multiple devices if they're enabled to work with it. The downside here is that the stylus itself, the drawing experience itself just isn't, it isn't that good. There's a lot of wobble to the pen. The pen isn't that accurate. There's a fair amount of lag. It's not horrible, but it's not great. It's not nearly as good as what you could get with the XP pen or with any of Samsung's devices. But when you look at the price, whether we're talking about the XP pen or Samsung's Galaxy Tab S9 FE, then you're saying, hey, it's half the price. I can make those trade-offs. And I would say, yeah, maybe, but there's some other problems with this tablet that I think really push it off the edge for me and make me say, okay, no, this probably isn't the right thing. First off is the overall quality. Oftentimes when you find an Android tablet this cheap, it is, it's exactly that. It's just too cheap. The colors don't look good. It doesn't feel very fast. Oftentimes when I draw on it, it won't register the line because it's trying to think and say, oh, wait, I'm in drawing mode. Now I'm going to draw the line. And this happened to be across programs. It happened to me, you know, from time to time. Sometimes I would pick it up and it would work just fine and the tablet didn't seem slow at all. Other times I'd be doing something with the tablet and it seemed really, really slow. And what worries me is not so much those times that it feels slow on occasion, it's the fact that six months from now or a year from now, I have a feeling that this tablet is gonna seem really, really slow and just not stand the test of time. Now, I am comparing three tablets here, but I'm gonna throw a fourth one in here just in case, because if you're looking at the other two, which start around $500, you might say, I'm willing to make that trade-off, but I would say no, Check out this instead. It's called the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite. Now this came out about a year and a half ago, so it's getting a little older, and it originally was priced around $350, which is a, a fair price, still lower than that $500, but nowadays you can usually find it cheaper than that, and it's not uncommon to find it for around $250, the same price as this. Now the screen isn't as good as the S9 FE, but the pen is identical to the S9 FE, and I haven't seen the kind of performance issues on the S6 Lite that I would see on the Huion. Doesn't mean the S6 Lite is gonna last forever and it's gonna be fast forever. That is one of the problems with buying something inexpensive like this. But I think if this is the only option you have and this is the only price range you could really jump into, the Samsung might be the way to go. So that leaves us with our other two tablets. And both of these, I really don't have a problem recommending. Oh, another thing I recommend are my courses over at bradsartschool.com. When I started taking online art courses, I quickly found myself way in over my head. It was like jumping from L elementary school straight into college. I needed something that was in between that. My learn to draw in 60 days course is that middle step that goes over the basics of drawing so you can jump into more advanced tutorials and courses with confidence. To learn more about that course and my other ones, go to bradsartschool.com. All right, let's talk about XP Pen's new magic drawing pad. One of the first things you're gonna notice about this is it's a slightly larger Android tablet than most of the other ones out there. I'd say an average Android tablet size is like 
10 inches around that. That's about the size of the Huion I just talked about. The S6 Lite that I mentioned a little bit ago. This one is a little bit bigger. This is coming in closer to like 12 inches. This is similar in size to like an iPad Pro. It's about the same width, but not quite as deep. The other thing you're gonna notice when you pull this thing out of the box is that this has a matte screen finish on it. This is the only Android that I've seen with a screen finish already applied. Of course, you can always buy your own screen protectors and place those on yourself, but there's just something really elegant of having that built on the screen already. Plus, you don't get pieces of dust trapped underneath it when you're applying it like you would if you put on your own. The other thing I noticed here is the colors on the screen are fantastic. This is not an OLED display. This is just a standard LCD display, but the one they chose to use is a really, really nice panel. It also helps that some of the, like, built-in backgrounds that they're using here are really beautiful illustration with like bold colors that really show off what this display can do. It just leaves a really, really, really good first impression. At least a good second impression too. When you pick up the pen and use it, it looks fantastic. Uh, when you're drawing in any art app, you're gonna first of all notice that the lines are, are pretty smooth. You can find some wobble if you go looking for it. But one of the things that this pen does is it takes XP pens pen technology that they use in all of their tablets, the 16,000 levels of pressure sensitivity and all that fun stuff, and it puts it in Android. This is an area I would love to see Huion just straight up copy in the next iteration of their Android tablet, and I do hope they make another one. There are a couple quirks to it that I mentioned in my review. The first one is, is that at some angles, I've noticed that the offset of the cursor is a little bit different than where your pen tip is, especially at the angle I sit on the left-hand side of the screen, I noticed that pen tip is off by like, I don't know, three, four, five pixels sometimes. And that accuracy can affect you if you're drawing circles or trying to line up lines and that sort of thing. It's the sort of thing that you can get used to, but it is also noticeable. On their standard drawing tablets, if you ever run across anything like this, you can go into the settings and you can actually recalibrate the pen yourself. And that's not something you can do here on Android. And the other little nitpick I had was the screen texture. Now the screen texture is a matte screen texture and it looks really good. It allows the colors to come through, but it's a really smooth matte. So you're not quite getting the, the pen feel that you get with some of their other tablets because of that. Now, one of the things that they do include here in the box is they include some extra pen nibs, including some of their felt tip nibs, and that adds a little bit more scratchiness to it. That does feel better. So if you are looking for a little more scratch, you can get that. So maybe that's not a nitpick. Maybe I should take that off my list, but it's worth noting if you like a really coarse texture when you're drawing. From a performance standpoint, this thing was fantastic. Every drawing app that I threw at it, it was fine. I didn't see any line stuttering or staggering. The, the lag wasn't bad. All the things you're looking for were there. Um, so overall, pretty happy with the hardware. And the last one we're gonna talk about is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 FE. Now every year I do an end of the year roundup where I talk about my favorite tech and I rank it. Number one on that list was this tablet. Is it because it was the best tablet released last year? No, but I felt that it was the best value for the money. So you get a really, really good tablet, but you're not paying a ton for it. I think $500 for the amount of features and quality that you get, this is a really good value. This comes with the Samsung Galaxy S Pen. This is a fantastic pen. It draws really well. It's really accurate. Pressure is fantastic. This is a Wacom powered stylus. This is a Samsung screen. And so even though it's not an OLED screen, like the non FE versions of the S9, the screen still looks really, really good. Samsung just knows how to do great screen. Performance is snappy. The speakers sound good. The cameras even look pretty good. All those little details that Samsung has worked on in their phones and in their tablets for years is just here. There's even extra features here like Samsung Dex, which turns your tablet into like a working computer looking thing if you attach a keyboard to it. You can mirror your PC display to this, still use your pen and use this kind of like a graphics tablet if you don't mind the lag. You just get all of that Samsung extra baked into the software. Are there any negatives? The only negative I would say here is the pen itself. There's nothing wrong with 
the way it draws. But this is a glass screen, and to offset that glass screen, which a plastic stylus is just going to wiggle all over, it's hard to get control, right, is they have a rubber-tipped stylus. Now, two things with this. One, that rubber tip is going to wear down quickly if you're a really heavy drawer, so you're going to have to buy some extra nibs. This doesn't come with extra nibs. And the other thing is, is even though that gives you drawing control on the screen, it doesn't feel natural. Having a pen tip on a rougher surface kind of feels like paper. You have control. That rubber tip does not feel natural at all. And if you've never used one before, the very first time you're going to be like, something's off here. Something's weird. There's a learning curve to it. You get used to it. And I've been using Samsung tablets for years. So when I pick one up, it just feels very natural to me. But I still see it in the comments sometimes where people are like, this is a little weird to get used to. And, and they're right. It can be. And that's an area where the XP Pen really excels. So this one also gets the Brad recommendation. So which one is the winningest winner? Out of these three, what would I recommend? Honestly, I think it's a toss up between the XP Pen and the Samsung. With the Samsung, you get all of those extra bells and whistles that come with the software. With the XP Pen, I think the drawing experience for me, that pen on that textured screen just feels better better. If that's what you're looking for, XP Pen might be the way to go. Samsung's also gotten better and better and better about software updates and supporting their products for longer and longer and longer over time. So you know that if you get the S9 FE, that's going to be supported for years to come. I'm not sure how many Android app to update Android updates you're going to get with the XP Pen. It might be a lot, it might be a few, but what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.